I was concerned this was gonna happen. This is the south side of my house. Well, if you haven't already noticed, my house does not sit on an exact north-south, east-west axis. I'm kind of angled a little, so north is actually that direction, sort of. <laughs> um, so, right now, it's 5.49 um, p.m., so the sun is setting, and it's here behind this tree. And I knew when I put these here that it would be a gamble if they would get enough sun or not. Um, so I put potatoes and garlic. I'm not sure if these are determinate or indeterminate potatoes. They're russets. They came from the grocery store and they sprouted, so I planted them. This is garlic. More garlic over here. Not sure why it's doing that. Oh, <laughs> bad cameraman. Um, yeah, and then I had sweet potato slips that I don't think are surviving. This was a sweet, this is just the whole sweet potato. So I actually found uh, three more sprouted potatoes, which is not typical for our house. Usually we go through a lot of potatoes, um, but I found three more sprouted potatoes earlier that I might bring out here and put in place of the sweet potato slips that I previously put out here. And I don't think I finished my thought about the uh, russet potatoes over here. I'm not sure if they're indeterminate or determinate. So I just came up and mounded more dirt around them to see they might be indeterminate from what I can tell. So I might be able to come out and just keep mounding and get potatoes as far as it'll keep going. So stay tuned for more. Take a lap around my driveway for all of the volunteer broccoli. Oh no, somebody stepped on that one, I think. How many broccoli plants do you think are here? I do not know the exact number, <laughs> but if you had to make an educated guess, how many broccoli plants? These are the only ones that I planted intentionally and look how leggy they are. This is cilantro or it's supposed to be cilantro because that's what I wanted to grow in this pot and I still have volunteer broccoli in the pot. <laughs> that one's doing the best. Out of all of my volunteer broccoli plants, that one's doing the best. Um, but I also sprayed for weeds and that's what these like variegated spots are. It's because I was spraying for grass around the edges of the driveway and it splashed on it. That's another one there. So in any case, um, those primrose and that little flower there, I need to see what I'm doing wrong with them. They might not be getting enough sun. It might just not be warm enough, but they're supposed to be perennials, so I'm not sure why they're looking horrible, but I didn't get into gardening for flowers. I got into gardening for vegetables, so we'll worry about that another day. This is my pollinator bed. I planted all of these flowers to help bring monarchs to my yard. My great-grandmother loved monarch butterflies and I had one visit me last year and it was really fun. And it was something really cool to come out and check on the progress it was making. So I wanted to bring more to my yard. That milkweed is not loving <laughs> the cold nights that we're still getting. I covered it when it was gonna be below 40. I kind of wrapped it in a, uh, what would you call that, fleece jacket of sorts <laughs> it's still not loving life yet so it might this one completely froze but it's regenerating so i'm not too worried about the other one petunias begonias i'm not sure if that one will survive that begonia is coming back and then that one over there that doesn't have any flowers, that's a zinnia. There's other plants in here, but 
I threw compost down and I'm not exactly sure where things ended up. Is that a cucumber or a melon in my flower bed? Oh, that's gonna be horrible. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, there's some flowers for sure. Oh, this is just gonna be a big old surprise now, isn't it? Here, I purchased this burpless cucumber plant and I thought it was three because of the way that it split off into three. But I tried to really gently take it apart and I got concerned that I ripped too many uh, roots. So I decided to just put it in the ground as is. And I had two cucumbers sprout in my greenhouse. So we got one there and we got one there and they just sprouted like overnight and last night. So this is kind of an experiment. Technically it's already sprouted, but it didn't really get a secondary leaf yet. So I'm not sure if I actually should have tried to harden it off. Either way, I had so many cucumbers last year, it was coming out of my ears. So we're just gonna go ahead and put these in here and see how it goes. Here in the middle, I had started a bunch of salad mix seeds and I put them in the middle and then I got the compost. So I made an executive decision when I was spreading compost to just cover it. It might not come back. I don't care. It was just kind of like a, hey, let's throw this in the garden anyway. But I also tried to plant beets and I had little toothpicks telling me where the beet seeds were planted. So not sure if covering them with compost will still facilitate growth or if they're just done for. Yay for experimenting. I caved a little bit and planted long beans, just two right there. I know nothing about elephant ears, but my mom likes them. And I planted one there and one over there. My shadow is still in the way. One there. Um, that soil is very rocky and clay and not um, ideal. So I have no idea if those are gonna go, but they were already kind of sprouted when I put them in, so. And then over here, I put several cucumelon seeds where those toothpicks are. My eight day forecast doesn't have anything below 40 over the next eight days. So I went for it guys. Kale plant that I purchased and peas. I started all those from peas, which is technically the seed. So. I'm having a hard time keeping them off the chicken wire and trying to go up the trellis. So eh. they kind of have a mind of their own right now. So I say this every time, this is my pepper bed and I put carrots with little toothpicks down the middle. But since they are buried so deeply at this point under all the compost, it's likely I will never see them. So just to gamble on this bed, I guess exciting news in the tomato bed. The onions have poked through the compost. I purchased these tomato plants. Uh, the one in the middle is not loving uh, maybe being planted so deep. Chef Jeff's beef master. Uh, it's kind of fainty and it's had plenty of water, so I'm not going to uh, water it again. But I should probably break this off because it's too early for that. Sad base. Okay. Onion. Onion. Anytime I put my hand in the way, it uh, refocuses on my hand. Uh, excuse me, pinwheel. Thank you. Uh, I didn't count how many onions I planted, but that's garlic. This owl is sleeping on the job. It's supposed to be scaring all the birds away. Now come on, get with the program. Start being scary. Now I'm out back. See if my neighbor, yep, my neighbor dog heard me. This is yellow squash not uh oh maybe that's a new leaf from last time hello sir 
And this is a pumpkin. I think it likes it here. And I need to come through and get rid of all the weeds on the edges so that it doesn't take me over. This group of plants were here and I usually just run them over with the mower. So I decided this year to let them go and see what they are. Can anyone tell just by looking at them? If they're like an iris or, I mean, they look like the iris that I have out front, but I don't know what else they could be. What is this? Something dug a hole. Ooh, my hand looks dirty. It's not that dirty. Squirrels. Oh no, now there's footprints. <laughs> Hopefully I remember that I did that. Question for this video. I need to know about, what am I here? I need to know about a flower that's a perennial that also vines. Cause I would like to utilize that trampoline frame and put it somewhere to bring pollinators to the yard. But I want it to be a flower, not food, you know? So let me know if you know of a vining perennial that I can put on this uh, trampoline frame. And onions, hello. So this was the very first bed. If you watched my flashback video, this bed is what started it all. <laughs> and obviously I've not done anything to it. I took up all of the framework that was around it. It was infested with termites, I think. So I just trashed all of that. <sighs> I don't know what these weeds are. It's some kind of tree, but this. This is an onion. Oh, it's second year, so it's gonna put off a bloom. <gasps> wow. Okay, so backstory. Last year, I started onions from seeds, and I had, if you watch that video, I had just some rows of onions here. Well, I gave them up for dead if they didn't do anything, or I took up what I could and put them in the pot that ended up out front. These two weren't doing anything they were just gone like they didn't I didn't even know they existed so then they started coming up this year and I'm like wow I'm considering them volunteers no idea if that's a red or a yellow this one's probably a yellow I think if you can look by the bulb right there but yeah I get I forgot it was the second year so maybe we're gonna get seeds I don't know let me know what you think this, all of it was over here when I moved in. I think it's a yucca plant, maybe? Oh no, is that poison ivy? Ugh, I thought I got rid of that. Okay, well that's obvious that I did not. So I guess I'm gonna combat that some more. That's fun. If you have tips for getting rid of poison ivy, I have the spray. And I need to come in here and clean up all these leaves so I can see where it's coming from. At first, I thought it was coming from over here because it had gone around the corner. So I thought it was on this end, but I didn't see any at the beginning of the year on this end, and this is the first time I'm seeing it, which is in the middle. It's way back there. frustrating. I have a couple different drip irrigation systems that I purchased that I need to get out and try to set up. And then I might buy a timer for the faucet or the spigot so that it automatically turns on and waters things. And then I know I mentioned rain water buckets. So there's that. It's on my radar too. So I don't know. I'm only one person and I can't get it all done in one weekend or one day. So, uh, I suppose that's about it for today. Thanks for watching and you'll see me next time.